So good morning. Um, I want to uh, acknowledge uh, my co-lead, Dr. Nora, and all the uh, members of our group listed uh, on the uh, slide here, and also uh, thank Charlie and all her staff for keeping us on uh, task with this uh, very important uh, project. So the conceptual model, uh, we spent a lot of time uh, designing and developing this. I know many of you have seen lots of models that uh, exist. But as we began to craft this, we felt it very important to begin to think about all the different groups that were going to become involved, that it wasn't just physicians, but it was healthcare providers in general. It also uh, needed to look at all the different uh, environments that people work in and where they were in the stages of their career. So in designing this, we uh, tried to take all this into account and make it uh, uh, much more inclusive. We also realized that as all of these work groups began to develop their uh, efforts, that they needed some kind of a model to work off of. So we tried to work as quickly as possible. Uh, so this was completed uh, relatively quickly, beginning back in July. Uh, for you to read a little more about how it all evolved, there's a paper that came out in January of this year that was titled A Journey to Construct an All-Encompassing Conceptual Model of Factors Affecting Clinician uh, Well-Being and Resilience. So the next steps that we're involved in, this needs to be a very dynamic model because it's going to work in with the knowledge hub you're going to hear about a little bit more. And the efforts that are now beginning to be carried forward is beginning to look at the taxonomy of what exists within our model and how that will fit with the knowledge hub. And uh, Dr. Noor is going to spend a little time being a little more uh, explicit about how this whole design uh, looks and works in this dynamic fashion. And the plan is really for it to be ongoing and uh, changing as all of the data and information begin to come in. I was listening to Dr. Murthy this morning and I was looking at thinking about the model and thinking maybe the center of this nucleus ought to read head, heart, and love rather than how we've constructed it because of uh, that message that we were hearing this morning. But uh, I think that we are going to see changes. We've already made a few changes uh, to uh, some of our factors as we learned more about it. So uh, then in uh, addition, we were uh, tasked with developing a glossary of terms and uh, definitions and we've looked at the different uh, factors that we have here, but we also went to all of the different groups to try and gain information of what terms they were feeling important uh, to have shared, because we want to have some standardization to terminology that's going to be used as research and other papers begin to come forward. So uh, this is uh, where we are. We've realized we have to work closely with the Knowledge Hub because, as I think you're going to hear, this is going to be a layered type of approach. And uh, I think it's going to be very successful. And uh, I thank all the group that we've been working closely with for uh, all the efforts that have been put in to uh, make this all come together. So I'll pass it over to Dr. Nora to go into a little more detail about it. Good morning. What a pleasure to be with all of you. This is a busy slide. <laughs> the issue that we're talking about has elements that are simple, complicated, and complex. And I think that is a powerful lens to view this model through. Simply looking at the center, clinician well-being is an important good in and of itself. And if we are to truly care about the care of patients, families, and communities, clinician well-being is absolutely crucial to caring for those people. That is the simple core message at the heart of all that we are doing. But the model becomes more complicated as you look at it. In fact, there are a variety of factors, and they're interrelated as represented by the arrows in this, that I, and there are seven domains that have been identified by the conceptual model group with subdomains identified through expert testimony, 
review of the literature, and other aspects. The four external domains are social cultural factors, regulatory, business, and payer environment, organizational factors, learning and practice environments. There are four of them. Four external factors compared to three individual factors represents in some way that while much of the focus of prior work has been very much focused on the individual, in fact, the environment has a larger amount to say about clinician well-being. The three internal factors are healthcare role, personal factors, and skills and abilities. So now we understand it's getting more complicated. Let's make it complex. In the next two slides, I'm just going to highlight the external and the internal factors so you can see them in, in print size that you might be able to read. But a few things. First, you'll notice that they're alphabetized. And some people have said, well, why is resilience with the R's in internal factors rather than highlighted? It's so important. Because the reality is this complicated set of factors becomes complex in the individual and in the organization. And so this model is intended to be a first step that people can go to to look at these various factors and get more information about what will be complex in terms of what is operating in a situation and how an organization may opt to diagnose and then treat lack of clinician well-being or improve clinician well-being in its environment. These are the individual factors. And I would point out that recognizing the complexity of this is where the conceptual model is going to next. As Dr. Henger identified, it is likely that some of the words, phrases may change over time, but in addition and most importantly, we will soon be fully embedding the conceptual model with the knowledge hub that you will hear about in a few minutes. That will allow each of these domains and each of these elements within the domains to be linked to an appropriate landing page in the knowledge hub which will include resources to allow people trying to explore a socio-cultural factor or a skills and ability factor to truly access those things that may help them diagnose and intervene in the environment. Um, with that, let me turn it over to Dr. Cipriano, please. Thank you, thank you very much.